Kitzer Shochan Aruch, Simon Kuf Yud, Simon 110, Halacha Yud Beis, Halacha 12. As we said in a previous uh, video, previous Halacha, the person who uh, is actually baking the, the matzahs needs to be a scrupulous, a scrupulous individual. He needs to be a trustworthy and, uh, and strict individual. Um, whenever you will see. Okay, so let's begin. Ha'oife, the person who is baking, Yizahar Ma'od, he needs to be very careful, La'ashkiach, to be guardful, to watch, Shelo Tiskafel Ezo Matzah, that he shouldn't fold any matzah, that no matzah should become folded. So when he puts it on, out, in, into the oven, he should be careful that the matzah does not become folded, which of course it's very simple because the matzah is super thin, um, it's rolled out super thin so that it should bake quickly. So that's one of the things that he needs to be careful, careful is that when he puts it into the, into the oven, it is not folded. Now one of the ways they do this is, is that when they put it in, you, you might see it it's actually hung over a, a pole and he will put it in instead of putting it in on a peel, a flat surface, he will sort of roll it out onto the bricks uh, of the oven. Okay, and that of course is to limit the possibility of folding, but nevertheless folding still is possible and it does happen. So the one doing that, the one actually in charge of baking, the matzah needs to be super careful about that. Okay, vegam, and also, shelo siga echas mechaverta. And also it needs to be careful that one, matzah should not touch its neighbor. Right, the, the matzahs need to be uh, uh, separate when they're baking. Key, because, b'makom ha'negiyah, in the place where they are, are touching, should they touch, became and likewise, B'mokom shin miskapelas, in a place that it, the matzah, a matzah would be folded. Ain the nefes maher, it doesn't bake as quickly, it doesn't bake quickly. O mis chametzas, and it becomes chametz. Because we have it in a warm oven and it has more potential to become, um, become chametz. If it's folded, it could be, uh, it's folded over, it could be two, three, or four times, that flock could be two, three, or four times as thick as the matzah itself. So you can imagine that it would bake at a much slower rate. And uh, so that opens up a window of opportunity, especially if we are running up towards the end of our 18 minutes for the matzah. Um, anyway, but that's mostly a concern. Um, I think the reality is, even if it uh, was folded, that it w would not necessarily be chametz. But there is a, a real concern uh, that this is the case. These, these matzah ovens, at least in the industrial setting that I'm used to, burn super, super, super hot, uh, way more than uh, what our, our ovens in our kitchen. Okay. Fine. Ve'im and if error, it should occur. Shenizkapla. If it should occur that a matzah does become uh, folded. O or shenizkapach. I'm sorry. Shenizkapach. That it should uh, inflate. As a matzah, any one of these matzahs. Yeah. You need to break it. Ula hashlich, and to throw it out. Es hamachom hahu, that place. Vahu chametz, and it is chametz, or at least we consider it as chametz. So this part, when it, it, bl it blows up, um, this is what we put the holes in it for. I, mean, I remember I directed you to go look up the pita when it was is baking and how it inflates whenever you bake it. If you do not have holes properly in the matzah, to let out the steam, then it will, um, they, they, it, like any other dough, it will inflate. So that is a, uh, a concern. So if it does that, then we consider that to be potential, potentially chametz. Okay, 
So, so like, like I said, we need to um, we need to break off the place where it's folded, and we need or we need to and we need to throw it away. And that place uh, that's considered at least we consider it as if it's chametz. Veshar mutter, and the rest of it is mutter. The rest of the matzah there is permitted. So you can break off a, a portion and around the place where it was folded and the rest of that piece of matzah would be would be permitted and of course it would be broken matzah so we would not use it necessarily for the seder as you know the three matzahs but we would uh, keep it for shvar we would keep it f- to give the kids <laughs> or, or something like that okay fine of all but im nagu if, it, if if this one touches that one, but tanor in the tanor, keshen adan lachos while they're still moist. So when they're still wet, though, yesh lahater bediavad. Bediavad after the fact, we can let it go. Um, so on the front end, we have to be as strict, as scrupulous to not have these touch. But on the if they're touching just merely on the edges, on the back end after we've done after we've already done it. We can uh, allow these matzahs. Just uh, it's just not the best way, best thing to do. Fine. Uh, now a little definitional part. We mentioned earlier a matzah that had inflated. So what what is that? What's considered inflated? Matzah nafucha, an inflated matzah. Yeah, hainu that is shenicher nicher that it's clear. It's recognizable. It is clear that the matzah has split in its thickness. You know, there's a top side, there's a bottom side, and it's you can tell that the top and the bottom of the matzah, the these layers, are being separated. The halal and the opening, the, the hollow space, who kamo rochav agudel. It's like the thickness of a thumb. So as thick as a thumb is on an adult, if it uh, if the matzah is inflated and it has that much space in it, then that's definitely no good. We are concerned. Um, uh, again, I, I don't think that this means that it's definitely chametz. I just think that this means that we're concerned that it's chametz and because of the strictness, again, of the iser of chametz on Pesach, we don't take any chances. Okay? So that was that halacha. I hope you'll join me again for the next halacha. Call to Hatzlacha Rabba. Keep learning.